you say you had to tell the truth, in which case, why did you settle out of court with Hasmat Jalal? When Hasmat Jalal first accused you of writing fantasy and fiction, you retorted that he was speaking a pack of lies. And yet when he took you to court, you settled out of court, no. you agreed to remove his name, you agreed to in fact expunge large sections of the description of your relationship with him. Why? It was actually done by my publisher. And you could have refused? I refused that. You and mean they did it without your permission? No, it was the, just they changed the name. Already his name was known and he filed case against me. But in addition to changing the name, large sections of description of your relationship no, with him was no, expunged. No, It says so no. in the Hindu newspaper, it is, 19th it is of false. December 2003. It's false. It's false. false. You it's never, false. You've never corrected it, you've never denied it. I did, I did that in the Bengali newspaper. Why not in English? So <laughs> they didn't ask me. All right, at least you changed the name. If you believe what you were doing was justifiable and that you were telling the truth, why change the name? I didn't want to change the name, but it was publisher's uh, uh, pressure that I had to change the why name. Why did you give in to pressure? I didn't uh, want to. You know, but, but the publisher censored my, uh, my book a lot. Without your permission? Without my permission. Did you consider taking the publishers to court? Uh, I did not. And I don't think that it is a compromise. I... Uh, still, there are lots of books of mine which are banned by Bangladesh uh, uh, Your government. Your books may be banned, but I'm talking about the also, principle of revealing people's personal details, of invading their privacy. I put it to you that your critics say, Tasleema Nasreen only does this to titillate to attract attention, to no, create it's not controversy. True. No, it is not true. All I right? have. Uh, Let me quote to you then another sentence from your autobiography which people say is proof that she only writes to attract attention. You say, I think a woman can maintain her chastity even after maintaining sexual relationships with ten men. Yeah. Now, that may sound clever, it may be catchy, but it's meaningless. No, it's not meaningless. Actually, uh, what I said that honesty, honesty, one person can be honest, one woman can be There's honest. There's a difference between honesty and chastity. Chastity is not a state of mind, it's a physical state. You know, there is a word in Bengali which is shot, means honest, and shoti means chest woman. So there is no word for man in that sense. So I, I uh, related the word shot and shoti. Shot means honest, so one woman can be honest after having relations, sexual relations with ten men. You know, you sound a bit like Humpty Dumpty. He said, I use words to mean what I want them to mean. You have every right to do that as an author. The problem is, it becomes very difficult to communicate and almost impossible to understand. If you keep using words in this way, you're simply playing with them. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, you don't know Bengali. If you knew Bengali, you would understand that there is a, the, 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 the two words sound the same, like shot and shuti. Your critics say that the Slima Nasreen is her own worst enemy. I don't think so. Critics can say anything. I know what I am doing. And I'm telling the truth. I want to change the society. I want to make uh, women conscious about their rights and freedom. I I, I want to, you know, I don't want any religious law. I don't want any patriarchal okay. system. Let's then take a break at that point and let's come back and talk about your relationship with the Indian government. Why are you being denied a right to be an Indian citizen? We'll be back in a moment's time. See you after that. See, Mr. Steen, Mr. Steen, let's turn to your application to become an Indian citizen. It's almost two years since you applied. And even so, you haven't as yet got a decision. And in the meantime, your visa is only extended six months at a time. Do you think you're being treated fairly? I don't think so. Why? Because, you know, the most of the people in this country, as far as I know, want me to be a citizen of India. I was persecuted in my country. I had to leave in exile for more than 12 years 
and my language is Bengali. I w love to live in Bengal. I love to live in India. And it's humane to allow me to live in India. For two years, the government hasn't given you a decision. How much tension, how much unhappiness has that caused you? Yeah, I am unhappy. And, uh, and uh, it's really not a very um, good condition that I'm living in. So you live in tension? I, I live in tension. So at any time, maybe I have to leave this country. So where would I go? So always I'm... Uh, the other thing is, they won't give you a visa for more than six months at a time. Businessmen can get visas for a year or more, but they only give you extensions of six months. Is that unfair? It's uh, fair or unfair. I don't know, but uh, I'm unhappy with the way I have been treated by Indian government. In March, you told PTI, that the hold-up was because the West Bengal government hadn't given a letter recommending that you should be made an Indian citizen. Why is the West Bengal government dragging its feet? I think that the, that the West Bengal government banned my book because they wanted to make Muslims of West Bengal happy. So maybe if I live in, in, live in West Bengal, then the Muslims would not be happy with the, uh, with the uh, West Bengal government. So it's become a political issue? So it's become, it became a political issue, I think. Have you raised this with Buddhadev Bhattacharya? I tried to meet him, but it is impossible to meet him. He refused? He refused. Will you try again? I will try again. But are you trying with confidence or are you only trying because you think you have to keep trying? I have to keep trying. I love to live in India because uh, it's important for me to live in India. In the meantime, the All India Iftihad Council has announced a bounty of 5 lakhs for your life. Do you feel safe in India? It's not safe, but I love to live in India. I, I would live in India if I get any chance to live in India. But are you scared that some fundamentalist might come and shoot you? That some madman might come and shoot you because there is a five lakh bounty on your head? It can happen any, anywhere in the world. Fundamentalists are everywhere in the world. When I was living in Bangladesh, the fundamentalists could kill me at any moment, but I wanted to live in Bangladesh. I was thrown out of Bangladesh. And when I was living in uh, Europe, I got security, but still, uh, fundamentalists could kill me there. You know, Theo Van Gogh was killed in uh, Amsterdam. So you're not scared that a fundamentalist will come and kill you in Calcutta because there's a bounty on your head? No, I'm not scared. The paradox is today, the situation in Bangladesh is changing dramatically. Democracy is being revived, jihadists are being arrested, even killed, and people are breathing freely again. How do you regard those changes in your home country? I think it's temporary. Temporary? Yeah. You don't think this is the beginning of a change in Bangladesh? It's, um, I like to think that it's a beginning of change, but who would come in the power? The same old political parties who uh, are pro-fundamentalists, who use Islam for their own uh, interest to get votes from the ignorant masses, they would come in the power and they would never allow me to go to my own country. So you're saying Bangladesh will only change when the leaders of the Awami League and the leaders of the Bangladeshi National Party are actually removed from politics altogether and new people, new blood comes in. Yeah, I think so. A Let revolution is needed. A revolution. Let me yeah. quote to you what the editor of the Bangladesh paper, The Daily Star, wrote on the 21st of March about you. He says, it is time that the state moves to reinstate the rights of a woman who has been wronged for 13 years. She belongs here, whether or not you like it. Yeah. It's uh, wonderful. I, you know, I felt so happy that somebody supported me in Bangladesh. But... Uh, but this is one lonely voice. One lonely voice. This is not enough to make you want to go back. No. So India has to be your home. Because till the foreseeable future, Bangladesh is not safe. I think so. And so you say to the Indian government, let me stay here, give me a longer visa, 
please make me a citizen. Yeah, I like to say that. Regardless of the fact that your critics say she's posturing and she's only doing this for effect. That's false. So, Sri Manasri, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Effort.